They may be small, but cufflinks can leave a big impression. Frank Morganti has linked together in an in-depth look at how these small pieces of jewelry can help you express yourself. From humble beginnings in the 17th century as ribbons to help keep one's cuff closed, cufflinks have taken on many forms over the years and are still going strong here in the 21st century. Our hands are used every day for different tasks, and like Mother always said, keep your hands clean, but there's another item that one can do to add a bit of uniqueness to the day's activities by trying on a pair of cufflinks. Tony Davis of J. Edward Diamonds in Albuquerque shares his thoughts on what would be a good choice for a first-time buyer of cufflinks. Probably I would steer them towards something that's going to be less expensive, all right? Uh, something more plain. Uh, you know, not too elaborate. You might go with something in black onyx, simple white or yellow gold, depending on their color preference of metal, maybe with an initial or something like that on it. Other than first-time buyers, there are regular seekers of cufflinks as well. Doctors and lawyers, uh, people who are, I think, uh, more affluent generally, mm -hmm. I think, generally speaking. Um, cufflinks are very popular with those who uh, wear tuxedos because they'll not only have the uh, the cuff link, but uh, matching studs going down the front of their shirt. There are three basic types of cuff links among many different styles. They include the standard toggle back, functional snapper, and elegant double sided. One real treat to wearing cuff links is finding a set that has an enamel face to them. Davis explains how the enameling technique is done. Well, enameling um, is, is a, uh, it comes basically in a powder form. You put it onto the item and then it is. Uh, heated with a torch to melt that, that particular color into, into specific areas that you want it uh, in there or baked on. Cufflinks are predominantly seen on gentlemen, but have any women stopped by the shop to buy cufflinks for themselves? You know, I haven't, to, uh, you know, to date, uh, mm -hmm. I haven't had any. I have a lot of women looking for cufflinks <laughs> for, you know, their significant other, mm -hmm. but I haven't uh, actually sold a pair that I know of for them to wear themselves. Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, women do wear cufflinks. Actress Merlina Dietrich was a big fan of cufflinks herself. Cufflinks make a great conversation piece as shown in this early 1970s photo of former President Richard Nixon admiring Elvis Presley's cufflinks. With conversation comes expression and uniqueness, such as these Millennium Falcon cufflinks, and you can't get more unique than a custom pair of cufflinks. These can have anything from your favorite automobile to your initials enameled or engraved onto the face, or in Davis's case, something brought in from the great outdoors. One of my more unusual pair that have custom made would have been made out of uh, the elk ivories. Uh, hunters that, that go elk hunting, the bull elk has uh, two ivory tusks, and uh, you can cut the tips off of those, mount those into a pair of cufflinks. Whether they're custom or already made, cufflinks vary in a variety of prices. Oh, I will uh, have cufflinks probably starting at $50 or so. Uh, and for nice custom made cufflinks, you could go into several thousand dollars. Don't have time to get out and about? Sites such as eBay can help you find the right pair of cufflinks to add that finishing touch. This is Frank Morganti reporting. Frank is here to talk with us more about why cufflinks can add a little something to your traditional business wear. Thanks for joining us, Frank. Oh, you're very welcome. Thanks uh, for having me. Great, thanks. So, how long have you been wearing cufflinks and why do you enjoy wearing them? Well, as far as wearing cufflinks on a regular basis, I've been wearing them since I was 12. Uh, my first French cuff shirt was given to me by my mother on my 12th birthday. And uh, even before I started wearing cufflinks, I've been collecting them here and there. Uh, why, as far as why I enjoy wearing cufflinks, I, I guess it's, it's the look and the feel of a French cuff shirt, the way, it, it, I guess it's hard to explain. <coughs> oh, uh, one other thing I guess I can say, that the shirts are easier to iron in my opinion. But I'm happy, uh, I happen to be wearing my first pair of cufflinks today, which were my grandfather's. And they are, uh, three crowns on a blue background and basically that is the coat of arms uh, coat of arms for the country of Sweden and because my grandfather was 100% Swedish and he was given uh, that as a gift from some relatives who had traveled over there and then when he had passed on my grandmother gave them to me. Oh, so they're of special significance mm -hmm. to you? Yes. And how many pairs of cufflinks do you own? I have about 40 pairs right now. Just, yeah and then there are some people who of course have a lot 
more pairs I've been collecting over the years. There's one gentleman uh, by the name of Gene Clumpus at last check, he had around 30,000 pairs. <laughs> wow, great. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, and uh, you look great. Thanks.